Hi, this is Magnus with TFT. Today, I will show you how to do air brake test. First, we will do air leakage test. We want to make sure the engine is on because if the engine isn't on, we aren't going to be able to build up the air pressure. So as always, whenever you start the engine, you always want check in neutral right here and make sure both parking brakes are applied. And then we can start. All right, so our next step is we're going to chalk the wheels. But whenever we get out of the truck or enter the truck, we always want to make sure that we make three points of contact. Here, here, anywhere on the truck. Using your hands and feet, you always want to be grasping the truck and entering and exiting with your back turned away. You want to make sure you're talking the wheels at a 45 degree angle. This is because sometimes the vehicle will roll and you won't be able to pull out the wheel chocks. For this test, air system should be fully charged. So we're going to drop the air pressure to 100 PSI and then let the air governor cut out. My air governor cut out at 130 PSI. For this test, my combination vehicle should not lose more than four PSI in one minute. Now I will turn off the engine and turn on the ignition. Now that the engine is off and the ignition is on, we will release both parking brakes. And we will wait for the needle to stabilize. Now I will press and hold my service brake pedal and wait for the needle to stabilize again. We're going to keep our foot on the pedal until the end of the air leakage test. So no matter what, do not take your foot off the pedal or you will fail the test. My needle is stabilized at 101 PSI. Now I will start my minute. After one minute, my air pressure is still 101 PSI, meaning my combination vehicle lost zero PSI in one minute. This is less than four PSI in one minute, so this is a good test. Now I'm doing low system air pressure test. I will pump my service brake pedal until the low air warning light or the buzzer comes on. This should happen no lower than 55 PSI. Now it's important that you do this test very slowly because once the first warning sign comes on, whether it's the warning light or the buzzer, you need to stop pumping the brakes. If you pump the brakes even one more time after the first warning sign comes on, you will fail the test. My low air warning light came on at 62 PSI. This is not less than 55 PSI, so this is a good test. Now I'm doing emergency spring brake pop-out test. This should happen approximately between 20 and 45 PSI. So now I will pump my brakes again until both of my parking brakes pop out. For this test, it's very important that you keep pumping your brakes until both of the parking brakes pop out. If one pops out, but the other doesn't, just keep pumping until both of them pop out. Because if one pops out and you say that it's done, then you will fail the test. My parking brakes popped out at 29 PSI. This is a good test because 29 is between 20 and 45 PSI. Now we will safe start the engine and remove the wheel chocks. For this test, the air system should be fully charged. And if you don't want to wait for the air system to fully charge by itself, you can press down on the gas pedal and bring the RPM to around 10 to 12 RPM. Now I'm doing truck and trailer parking brake test. Uh, the air system is fully charged. The engine is working. Now I will release the trailer parking brakes and tr slowly try to pull forward. Vehicle is in drive. The tractor is not moving. This is a good test. Now I will apply the trailer parking brakes and release the tractor parking brakes and slowly try to pull forward again. The trailer is not moving. This is a good test. Final air brake test. I will do service brake check. Engine is working. Vehicle is in drive. I will release both parking brakes and slowly try to pull forward. And I will push the service brake pedal until my vehicle comes to a stop. My vehicle has come to a complete stop. This is a good test. 
my air brake test is done, my pre-trip is done.